Hello, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to be turning myself into a vintage cartoon. That's right, I'm going to be giving animation a try, or at the very least a character design. But my goal by the end of this is to create maybe three seconds of an animated cartoon. I would like to give some credit for the inspiration for this video to Cherry Deluxe, which is another channel here on YouTube. She creates vintage-inspired illustrations and animations, as well as creates some tutorials on how to draw what is known as rubber hose cartoons. Rubber hose is the term for this kind of deal, with cartoons that have basically rubber hose limbs, like the original Mickey Mouse is a rubber hose cartoon. Here are some examples of Cherry Deluxe's work. Now, ever since I was a very small kid, I have been incredibly fascinated by animation. I think it's just like the coolest thing ever. But finding Cherry Deluxe first on Instagram and then on YouTube reminded me of my love for the behind the scenes and the incredible skill that goes into creating cartoon characters and animations. You may have seen around the internet, usually on like Pinterest, things like this, which are the original character design sheets created by like Disney and Looney Tunes and all kinds of different animation studios. Creating a character design can take a very long time because not only do you want the character to look iconic and memorable, you also want it to be easy enough to draw that it can be created consistently for the sake of animation. This is basically the reason for the inception of rubber hose cartoons because it's a lot easier to draw just a tube than arms and legs with actual joints. But of course, I like to make life harder for myself, so my character is not going to be a rubber hose cartoon. I'm gonna try and go a little more in the vein of the Betty Boop-ish style with actual joints, but ideally I would also like my final animation to be in color. We are going to begin this process by designing our character. Let's get out the pencil and paper. Okay, so I am practicing doing a couple of different styles of faces. I want to start with the head of my character. So you can see here that I've tried a few different ways of doing especially eyes because figuring out how to do glasses I'm really not exactly sure what to do. I might need to just not have my character have glasses. But if I can find a way to give her glasses, that would be great. The biggest problem is that they just kind of crowd the face. They take up a lot of space and it makes the features a little bit less clear. So at first I thought that I wanted to try doing that thing where basically the glasses are the eyes and then you just like put pupils in them basically. And it was looking pretty creepy and pretty weird. So like I'm, I'm not really sure that I want to do that. Something I've noticed generally with a lot of cartoon character designs is that when the eyes have actual whites and then the pupil and iris inside, it usually gives more life to the character. So then you'll see here that I tried doing that but without any glasses. Then I tried adding a little tiny bit of some eyelids and making the eyes look in a specific direction. I also added some hair and immediately I could tell that those were the eyes that I liked the most. But there are still some more things to try because I want to see if there is a way that I can give this gal glasses without it looking super weird. I even tried looking up rubber hose characters with glasses online and it was so, so hard to find. But something that I have decided on is the head shape. Over here you can see that I just tried a basic cartoon body to see what direction I wanted to go in. But after trying this head shape that basically doesn't really have like a defined chin, I decided that I do want the defined chin, kind of like the egg-shaped head. I also decided on the nose pretty quickly. I did it pretty much the same in all of these. It's basically just like a little, a little rounded line. It just suggests a nose. So let's just play around for a bit with some more eye options because I really just want to see if I can make glasses work in any way. For the head, I basically start with a circle and then I put like a small oval, more oval-ish circle right below it in the middle. And then I use a rounded line to connect them. Then I'm just gonna erase all of this extra stuff inside. And there we have our little egg-shaped head. I'm gonna put the top of the mouth, basically where the top of that tiny little oval was. I'm just gonna do like two little rounded bits for the cupid's bow, and then one little rounded spot for below that. And then connect them with like sharp lines on the side, if that makes sense. And then right above that, I'm just gonna put my little nose. Now let's try doing a little something different to attempt some glasses. I'm gonna start by drawing the glasses rather than the center of the eye. And I don't care to okay, I have some little glasses. I'm just gonna connect them in the middle and put those little sort of branches on the sides. I'm gonna try doing like a little rounded mark that's almost like 
a little eye socket in a way, and then inside of that, like right below it, a little pupil. Hmm, I don't hate that. I'm just gonna do it on the other side. I'm gonna try putting a little line on the bottom also and see how that looks. I do not mind that. Of course, we need some eyebrows and I'm gonna put those over the glasses. Two little eyelashes coming off of these little top lines of the eyes and see if that helps make it a little more feminine. It's not bad. I'm gonna see if I can give her a little bit more of an expression. I'm gonna do her mouth again with a little bit more of like a a little bit more of a smile. I think it will help me make her eyes smile a little bit more if I sort of round this bottom line on the eyes and move it up a little bit. I think I like that. That's the best I've gotten a face to look with glasses so far. I am going to strengthen the line of the glasses a little more. I have a habit generally in drawing and writing. Whenever I use a pencil, I don't press very hard. No, my dirty eraser is putting marks. Okay, well, there is a gross eraser mark on her face um, that I can't seem to remove. But I can still see generally what's happening on her face. And I think I like it. I'm gonna do my vintage curl hairstyle because I think that works best for a cartoon character. The trick with like cartoon hair is you don't do individual strands, like hardly ever. And then usually this side of my hair, I tuck behind my ear. So I'm gonna have this ear be visible and I'm gonna put a little, a little bow right there because that is where I often put a hair bow. Okay, I'm going to try drawing this again because I am so bothered by this little eraser mark. I wanna see if I can do this again have it still look cute because I still think I like the life that is in these ones a little bit more. This one does have glasses right here, but you can kind of see what I mean by like crowding the face. It's a lot harder to see what's happening with the features. So let's try drawing this one more time. There we have our little gal. I'm gonna go back to this first one where I have the little smudge and see if I can like make her eyes look in a different direction. Cause that's something that I'm kind of worried about with this design. And we're getting more eraser smudges. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so it's a little bit screwed up once again by the eraser smudges in there, but I have managed to make her look in this direction. Since this drawing right here is already a bit of a mess, I'm gonna continue to see how I can change the facial expression here. Here we have a slightly different expression. So our problem is I like this design better, objectively. I think that it's cuter but it doesn't have glasses. So, I don't know. Want to see if I can make this work. You know what? That is not terrible. Glasses do make things a little more complicated because then when you put things on an angle, the glasses obviously aren't like flat to the face. They have some dimension. So when the face is turned a little more to the side, I'm gonna have to like draw the glasses a little bit differently. And then obviously it's just like one extra thing to draw which is never helpful with animation, but it looks more like me. So I believe this is what I'm gonna go with. So just drawing these designs takes me such a long time. So goodness knows that animation, just three seconds of it, the average is like 24 frames a second. You can do less than that, you can do more than that, but I think that was the standard for traditional animation. That's 72 frames for three seconds of animation, so. I'm gonna have to try and get faster at this, but I am also gonna be doing the actual animation part digitally because I don't have all of the crazy equipment you need to like perfectly do hand-drawn animation. So let me just show you the progression we have so far. So here is the first head that I drew when I was like trying out one of our cartoon bodies here. Um, and the eyes are too high up and there are no glasses. The hair has stayed pretty much consistent throughout this, and I'm actually quite liking it. The mouth has streamlined a little bit, the nose has not changed, because I like that nose. Then we tried some really weird, really creepy looking eyes right here. We tried a different head shape, which I decided that I do not like, but I found eyes that I did like. We tried some other things, a slightly different hairstyle with our little hair bow, played around with some different eyes to see if we could make the glasses work, and this is what we have landed on. Before, 
after. I think that this design is incredibly cute. I'm gonna need to draw it a few times to be sure that I can like do it relatively consistently, but I do believe that I'm going to need to get faster at this and I could also use some tips from somebody who's done this before. So let's have a chat with Cherry Deluxe. So I'm here speaking with Julina of the YouTube channel Cherry Deluxe and I'm gonna be asking her a few questions about animation. How long have you been drawing in the rubber hose style? So I've been drawing in that art style specifically since basically 2020, like when quarantine started. I've always had an interest in animation, uh, but then quarantine happened and that was like my first step into actually having time for it <laughs> because it takes so much time. How long have you been actually animating? Have you been animating like around the same amount of time as you've been drawing in the style or was that a later development? Um, uh, actually animating thing came like a year or so later. I wanted to get a feel for like the style itself and like actually learn a little bit of the fundamentals. Uh, I'm totally self-taught, like I didn't actually ever think of going to art school because it's expensive. <laughs> How long do you think it generally takes you to animate about one second of like a complete character? It depends. It depends on how detailed the character is. Like for my Rachel Maxi well, one, that, that one, one, she's a full body character, but just her upper half is moving and mm -hmm. she's like all black and white. So I think that one in total, I feel like max it took seven hours total from start to finish like starting with the sketch um doing every single frame actually trying to figure out like how the motions work and stuff that probably takes the longest and then you line it and then you kind of color it in uh sometimes you can duplicate layers and that makes coloring in a lot more easy for more detailed ones every frame will take about an hour if you factor in all those things seven-ish hours for the whole thing that you did for the little Rachel Maxi animation, or seven hours for one second of it? Seven hours for the total thing, I think. Like, her entire where she's moving, mm -hmm. I don't know how long that was. I think for a second, for how simple she is, maybe an hour, an hour and a half. What tips do you have for a first-time animator? Like, are there any any things that you were surprised by when you first started? Definitely focusing, or like, actually studying, uh, movement <laughs> and like how to animate movement specifically and not just you know watching a pic watching a clip of somebody throwing a ball like actually watch an animation of it i've always been super duper fascinated by animation since i was really little because my dad showed me like we've always basically exclusively watched vintage animations like in in my hmm. young childhood especially because we would get like vhs's from the thrift store and that was basically our sources of cartoons. I've been drawing for as long as I can remember, so I always, like, I've been paying attention to the way that things are drawn in cartoons, because I find it very, I find it very fascinating. Same, actually, like, I used to, I used to get little, um, sticky note pads, and I would do, like, the little stick man figure drawings in the corner so that you could flip through it. Like, I guess, I think that was, like, my first introduction to, like, actually doing animation myself. <laughs> yeah, I tried that when so, I was yeah, little, but I got too impatient, and so I just would, like, give up after a couple frames and be like, I don't want to do this, it's too much work. And now you're doing it again for your YouTube channel. Yes, and I'm gonna do it way harder because I love to torture myself. Oh yes, that's the life of an animator. <laughs> what should you generally avoid when designing a cartoon character, whether it's, like, legit rubber hose or more in the Betty Boop vein with actual joints? I think the main thing to avoid, especially with like the simple art style, because Betty Boop is also technically rubber hose, like she has joints, but if you see her moving in the cartoons, her limbs do like the weird rubber hosey stuff. I think the main thing is to just avoid making it too detailed. And I don't mean to like avoid making like extravagantly dressed characters or like characters with poor eyes and wings and stuff, but just you know, if it is a monster who's got all those things, then make the eyes the rubber hose style. Or for the wings, instead of drawing every single individual feather, just draw like the general outline or the little, just a couple little outlines of the feathers. Um, and then for like regular people characters, one thing I noticed that people do is they draw their rubber hose character and it has like a rubber hosey face. It's simple. It's usually like a circle and the little pie eyes. 
and then they'll have the gloves, of course. But then you look at the clothes, it's usually the clothes that kind of throw it off. But you look at them and they have so many like wrinkles and little details. And uh, they have like shading that's e excessive, in my opinion. <laughs> um, and so there's nothing wrong with like a little bit of that. But if you're thinking of a, a rubber hose like vintage character, you have to think of it from the perspective of, of okay, somebody is going to be drawing this. 5,000 times over and over. So and someone has to paint to it on an actual style. <laughs> yeah, if you want to actually mimic the style, you want to make it as simple as possible. So instead of drawing every little crease in like a pair of pants, you just make them simple, like four lines all together. <laughs> That's generally my plan. I don't really think I'm going to do shading of like any kind. Like, kind like, yeah, no, that's easier. great. Because the thing with shading is you have to make sure it moves correctly and mm -hmm. like, you know, stays where it's supposed to and then all that other stuff. So yeah, definitely, definitely stick with the simple colors there. I am a human with glasses and I want the character to look like me and glasses are annoying as heck to animate. <laughs> yeah, they look like that. <laughs> yeah, they're not just like flat to the face either. Like, when you turn a little bit, suddenly there's shape. They are three, a 3D object on top of the face, which is not mm -hmm. useful. I think my final question is, what do you think is the hardest thing to animate? Like, what you're doing right now is pretty difficult. I mean, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, like, human, human characters, human features. In my experience, that's what I've had the most difficulty animating. Even just the face, moving it just a little bit um, is... It takes a lot of work, and to get it to look right, I think I just also need to use more frames from time to time, especially with human figures. Billowing hair and like billowing skirts and dresses and things like that, I've wanted to do it. Like I've watched Ghibli movies and thought, oh my gosh, that's so gorgeous, I should try that sometime. And then I actually like flip through all the frames and it's like, mm, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna not do that yet, actually. <laughs> I am expecting hands to be a great difficulty for me. Um, oh, really? I've, I've gotten a lot better at drawing hands. Like, I'm gonna give her the, the dainty hands, not the glove hands. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten a lot better at hands over the years. I used to, like, be absolutely horrible at them, as I think most people were. But, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think the making them look the same every time part is going to be... The tricky part for the hands for me. Mm. So uh, you can smooth that a little bit too, and just you know not draw the fingers individually and just make them like a little triangle with lines on them. Except for like when she needs to do something. I think that that is all of my questions. So okay. thank you very much for being part of my little interview here, and I will yeah. send you the final animation when it's done, <laughs> if it perfect. If it, Maybe succeeds. We'll see. We'll I see hope it succeeds. Go. I'm really excited for it. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. I've now totally solidified the design for the head of this cartoon me. And I've also come up with a body design, including an outfit, which I have drawn right here. This is the one that I like. This one I do not like the length of the neck. It looks a little bit creepy, but uh, I am overall quite pleased with this design. I really like the outfit. Honestly, pretty much the hardest part of this is just getting the proportions the same every time. But I do think that that will be a lot easier when I'm actually animating because I'll basically be tracing over the last frame and just adjusting it slightly for the next frame, if that makes sense. I'm actually wearing this outfit right now. I have this short puff sleeved blue blouse and I'm wearing a pink circle skirt. I used one of Cherry Deluxe's videos to sort of figure out how to draw the body. It's pretty simple. It's mostly just made of circles, different sort of oval-ish shapes. I'm going to try and give you a time lapse of drawing this character. I am going to be doing this on my phone, which is a little bit difficult. I've done a lot of drawing with my phone with my fingers though, so I think I might be able to manage it. Of course, this is not the traditional method for animating because I don't have access to all the fancy machinery and stuff that you need for that. So this will be a little bit modernized. I'm gonna be using Ibis Paint or Ibis Paint this um, on my phone. One of the really difficult things here is that I have like no phone storage 
at all. It's, it's really terrible. I have no space. So I think what I'm going to do is draw the first frame on my phone and save it to my photos and then export it to my computer and then delete the first frame off of my phone, but it'll still be on my computer. I'm going to use a really simple digital pen brush for this. It's going to take a while, but I did learn from Cherry Deluxe, this is very useful information, that I can get away with less frames than I thought. She told me that she uses about seven frames-ish per second, um, but I could use a little bit more if I want it to be smoother. So I think that I'm going to go with about 10 frames per second for about 30 frames total. Really quickly before I start actually drawing, I'm going to show you the pose and movement that I want my character to do. It's a little bit difficult to fit myself into the frame, but this will have to do. For the starting pose, I'm going to have my left hand on my hip, my feet together, and my right arm just hanging down at my side. Then for approximately the first one second of the animation, I'm going to have the right leg bend a little bit so that the hips turn and have my right arm raise up towards my head. And then my character design has her hair down, so she's gonna grab a strand of her hair and twirl it in her finger, and then sort of lean her head away while she's doing that, and then put the arm down, but leave the leg bent. So that'll all be in about three seconds. Something I really liked about this motion is that while it is technically simple, animation-wise it has a lot of intricacies. It's short and it's cute, but it will help me really understand how the body moves. The way the hips are going to need to tilt for the first second is going to sort of show a little bit more realism and I think really bring the character to life. That is, if I can get it looking good and correct. But I think it's a good way to challenge myself and it's not all that long of an animation. So let's try drawing the first frame and see how it goes. So I ended up only doing a sketch for the first frame. The rest of the time I worked by just slightly altering the line work. I didn't find that I really needed the sketch, but traditionally you probably would have if you were planning an extensive animation, but I was just doing a very simple motion that was only three seconds. Next I did the line work for the first frame, and I kept the shapes quite simple with a lot of ovals and circles because you don't want things to be too difficult to replicate. Then I drew the clothing, and I kept the creases and fold lines very minimal to just suggest how the clothing was falling. Then I removed the sketch, and on a different layer underneath the line work, I colored my character in. And that's the first frame complete. I was quite happy with it, it was nice and simple. And right here you can see the line work change to start creating the second frame. Because of modern technology, I didn't have to recolor in my character for every single frame. I could just use the coloring in from the previous frame and change it a little bit to fit the new line work. Starting here around frame 3, you can see some of the really small adjustments I was making. Because the leg was bending, that not only meant that the hips would have to shift, but the way the skirt was falling would have to change. And just the way that physics in human anatomy works is totally wild. Another small change I noticed is that if the hips are shifting, that also means the shoulders have to shift, but not according to which hip is moving. If the left hip goes up, that means that the left shoulder tends to move down. I only noticed this by doing the movement myself. As the character was taking weight off of her right leg that she was bending, you could sort of see more of the front slash top of her foot, and I really like this sort of elegant shape that I got here. At this point, I tilted her head a tiny bit, and then in a couple frames you'll start to see it rotating. One of the alterations I found myself making the most was to the character's right sleeve, as a consequence of her arm being the thing that's moving in the biggest motion. I learned that it is incredibly small adjustments that suggest the movement of the head. I found this to be one of the hardest parts of the entire animation. If you look at each of the things I'm doing to move the head, individually they're very, very small changes. Things like moving the chin, moving the facial features just a smidge to the left, and also changing the hairline. And here comes the difficulty with giving a character glasses. Because, as I mentioned before, glasses aren't flat to the face, that means that they actually need to move a little bit more than the face does. Then of course there's the hands, which I will never be fast at. This is a time lapse and it still looks rather slow. It's a very painstaking process, and drawing hands like 20 times, I wouldn't suggest doing it for fun. Around this point we're reaching the end of the first day of animation, and in that first day I think I did about 10 frames. This is actually a little bit more than I was expecting to get done in the first day, but it definitely still took me a fair few hours. Now our character's hand had finally reached her hair, and I also started making her eyes blink. I think I probably made her blink in only about 3 frames, but if you wanted to do a slower blink, you'd want to use a few more than that. 
Now it was time to start making her head lean backwards, which was not very fun. I basically moved her facial features upwards on her head and squished them a little bit to change the perspective. I also raised her hairline and lowered where the bottom of her hair was to sort of create the impression that her head was leaning back. Now, as you probably know, in traditional animation, there is a lot of frame recycling, and that is not unusual at all. There's probably tons of cartoons where you haven't even noticed it. That is what I did for this animation. Or at least, sort of. I used pieces of previous frames from her arm moving upward, along with some new drawing, to make her arm go back down. But I did do a lot of new drawing of her facial features to keep things fresh and change her expression by the end of the animation. You can also see that I made her blink one more time. And that is all of the frames. Let's take a look at the final animation. That's my finished animation and I'm quite happy with it. It could be a little bit smoother, but 11 frames a second is already a little bit more than I was gonna try and do. Just this took me so many hours, but a traditional Disney animation is so incredibly smooth, I can't even fathom it. For this, I did everything myself, but traditionally you would have a bunch of people working on the same animation and each of them would have a specific job. You would have someone who did the sketches, someone who traced the sketches onto a clear plastic cell, and then someone who painted sort of the back of the cell to fill it in. You also would have had a background artist, not to mention the storyboarders who would have had to plan the animation beforehand. Then you would have someone who would take the cell and put it into some sort of machinery to take a picture of it so that it could become film. Then there's a whole nother layer of this, which is audio, which I didn't even need to tackle. Before the animation was even created, the voice actors would do their work, and then the animators would have to make the cartoon characters' mouths move to line up with the audio. Now let's talk really quick about the technology discrepancies because I obviously didn't have the traditional machinery to do animation. In some ways, I definitely had an advantage. For example, I didn't have to completely redraw the character for every single frame. I could just change it a little bit and then resave it to my camera roll. But then there's also the aspect that I did this all with my fingers. And if I had an actual pencil, I probably could have done the actual drawing a whole lot faster. But in other ways, I had time on my side because I didn't have to wait for any paint to dry. I didn't have to wait for any film to develop. But then again, on the other side, I had to do all of this myself and a traditional animator would have only really needed to be focusing on one skill at a time. So there are definitely pros and cons, but the bottom line is, Animation is hard. It's incredibly time consuming, and the next time you see a traditional animation, really just soak in the amount of time and talent that has to go into that. I will definitely be doing animation again, but probably not very often full body detailed characters. I did an Instagram reel a little while ago where I animated some music notes coming out of Music Box. That was a small detail that was really fun to do. It was relatively easy, but had a really satisfying finished result. If I were to do this again, something I would do differently is the hands. I put a little bit more attention into them than I probably needed to. So thank you once again to Cherry Deluxe for joining me in this video for an interview. And that would be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and all that jazz, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! I've always... Can you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> um... How did I ask that? My gosh, I can't even remember how... I can't even remember... <laughs>